Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor, and you can also find my blogs on gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So, market's trying to um, bounce back after uh, a bit of a pullback on Tuesday. Uh, so, we're sitting here, um, I'm recording this Tuesday night, and uh, one of the things that is going on is the NASDAQ has been weak, and I've covered that through the semiconductors, I've covered that through the NASDAQ 100, I've been talking about other ways to work in the market, either with industrial metals or with um, the oils. The industrial metals are actually starting to look weak, but I want to go through the industrials today and just talk about what I start, what I'm starting to see there, and it looks, it still looks okay. Energy is roaring, as I mentioned last week, um, so hopefully you're in on that trade. It looks, um, I think we're just getting started, but anyway, we'll we'll continue to monitor it. But um, again, I pointed it out last week, and then um, I did a daily five uh, selecting specific stocks. So if you're interested, head over there, and you can check out that on the Stock Charts TV channel or on gregschnell.com. Semiconductors continue to drift lower, uh, so that's a bit of a problem. The NASDAQ 100, I think there was only, you know, uh, after the opening bell this morning, there was only like 10 of them trying to be up today. Um, I know by the end of the day, a few of them rallied, but in general, it just seems to be uh, the move away from tech is getting more aggressive. The infrastructure plan is still supposed to be coming, so as long as that's in the works, um, it's probably not a bad place to go look at the industrials. And I've published this monthly conference call free look. I'll, I'll see if I can get it added to the uh, description section. So if you'd like to go check it out there, you could. Anyway, um, let's jump over into the charts. And we'll start with the NASDAQ here. So I've selected NASDAQ 100. If I click on this chart, it brings up a gallery view. Now these are my settings for the gallery view and you can see that this is the 60 minute. We pretty much moved down quite quickly here to new two week lows. And um, so we're trying to get a bounce off the 50 day moving average. One of the issues here is we were trying to take out the prior high and struggled to do it for two or three weeks and then all of a sudden let go. Now the real question is, you know, are we going to be able to hold on or is this the start of something bigger? Um, so I think if you draw a trend line under here, you'll figure out why uh, we bounced and closed where we did. Um, the NASDAQ 100 on the weekly chart, though, has a series of lower lows and lower highs in the PPO momentum indicator. And that's actually quite concerning because usually when we get that... So this first wave where we have a lower high than the prior high compared to price, which has a higher high compared to um, this lower high. So that's a divergence, right? One is below and one is above. So the momentum isn't as strong as the price action. On the second one, we also had smaller volume on the second one. And on this smaller volume, we've had less momentum, even though we made a higher high in price. So we actually call this double divergence, where we have the first one and the second one. That's a pretty weak setup. And we just need to be careful here. If, if you're invested in the tech area, that could be a little bit problematic. I want to show you the ARC charts. And um, the reason I want to point them out is just um, so that people are aware of the trend Actually, maybe I'll grab this daily chart and just unwind it a little bit here. Um, what you can see is it's pretty clear what's going on here. We're trying to build a, a topping structure. And the real question is we fell down. We tried to bounce off the 200-day moving average. And also, let's call it horizontal support around 110 it's really important here that that these um, innovation names or uh, or um, high growth speculative growth names some might not have any earnings at all um, don't get me wrong they're good companies it just might be out of favor to buy them right now so 
the idea being here we're stuck under the 50-day moving average we're trying to bounce off the 200 even if we wobbled in here for the next week or so it's important to be aware of how much of a topping structure this is and if the ppo can't get back above zero that's usually a a bit of a worrying sign so uh try and just uh be aware about that I, the one thing i would say is that almost all of the um ARC funds are behaving the same because a lot of them have similar stocks in them or perhaps the same stocks in them. So just be aware that the whole basket, and I covered that off I think last week, uh, where all of the ARC funds, if you put them on a percentage change chart, they all show the same pattern, maybe a marginally different percentage, but just be aware of that. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to get to was the NASDAQ composite. And one of the one of the things we've got going on here was the NASDAQ was outperforming the S&P 500. And then in November, a quick little correction started back up again um, on very high volume. Again, we were around 4 billion shares. We, we hit over 10 billion shares three days in January and February. That's almost remarkable. That is remarkable. Um, and then we pulled down and we've tried to rally. And on the second rally, you can see we had approximately the same slope. And then we got to the prior high and we're unable to break out. And so now we've dropped down and we bounced on the 50 day moving average. Um, in general, that's not a great setup here because one of the things we're starting to notice is, um, let me just add a little bit of data here so I can get, I didn't want to take away from the end here. Um, what I want to show on here is that if we took a horizontal line and just snapped it on relative strength here. If we go up to these prior lows here in March, we're just dipping below that. So we're now at one, two, three, four, five, call it six month lows. There's a little bit of a low there. We're getting very close to six month lows and getting under here, you know, we'd have to go down a little bit farther and that would put us at nine month lows so relatively significant level of underperformance for the nasdaq composite the big issue for me on this chart is that the volume looks like we've um, it was relatively euphoric around all those SPACs coming out and that kind of thing so the volume has gone away and typically when we see the euphoria go away we might also see a lot of the momentum drop the question now is, um, you know, how far does the NASDAQ have to drop to uh, catch itself? Now, we can draw an uptrend line like I did under those ARC charts. Um, it's down a little bit more. It'd be closer to 12.5 or 13,000. Um, and then just under that, we've got the 200-day moving average. So that, that could leave another 500 points for the NASDAQ and we were down 250 today so um, two or three of those drops will uh, kind of uh, get us to some of those lower levels so um, for all of those that think this might drop considerably that would still be multiple percentage points lower but I don't um, you know, you're still in a big uptrend. I think the real question would be how much pain can you endure uh, while these big names start to sell off hard. And when I looked at um, uh, the probably the the big name um, to watch here for actual readings toward innovation and momentum um, is Tesla, and we're trying to hold that six 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 fifty level. Um, that was kind of support for the month. But in general, what do you see when you stand back and look at it? You see a big giant uptrend at the euphoria in the top in January, February, it kind of ran into a high. And now it's actually rolled over the 50 day moving average and it's sloping down. It's finding friction around there, much like the ARC funds. Uh, the PPO is rolling over near zero and starting to go back below it again. Usually when you're below zero, the stock's not in an uptrend, uh, especially pointed down. So what we want to watch for here is um, how does Tesla react? You know, the 200-day the moving average is 571, so another 100 points lower than we are currently at. How does Tesla react there? And you can see uh, we got down to 539 in March um, after the February kind of sell-off that we had 
So, so we're getting down into these levels that are starting to be more meaningful all of a sudden. If we're making three month lows, which we did here, and now all of a sudden we'd make six month lows, that starts to become more of a defined topping structure. So just keep an eye on those um, those names. Now let's get into um, what is working. So again, if we don't have a sort order or a reason for a sort order, um, we we could get rid of the sort order that I've currently got, and I did it based on the scooter ranking. So if I click on here, um, uh, that's that's my normal way about of looking at it. So in order to get rid of those, uh, what we would do is just scroll down to the bottom here. Whoops, sorry. Um, my apologies for the scrolling. I have to go to edit first. I want to scroll to the bottom, select all the charts and remove the numbers. That's going to get rid of these numbers right here. And I'm going to remove them. This is very easy to do. And then I'm going to go back to summary mode and then pick whatever I want to sort order. Do I want to sort it on price, percentage change, maybe percentage change over a month, um, whatever. You, you can do any one of these. I typically like to just pick the scooter ranking. It's got a couple of different time frames in it. And, and we can look that way. So anyway, once we do that, we have to scroll back to the bottom and hit this number in sorted order button. And then it's going to save it in yeah, with the the same ranking order as the scooter. So now let's jump into the charts. Uh, this this one's been a choppy uptrend. You can see um, Freight Car America here has been uh, really a strong performer, then pulls back. Strong performer pulls back. Right now, all of these charts are on daily mode. Um, if we just want to switch them to weekly. The only thing I'd like to do here is probably just grab a little bit shorter time frame and then uh, apply the style to all. So it's going to change all the charts to be this two year weekly. So once once we're in here, um, you know, what are the things to look for? All of a sudden you can see the volume really spiking up on this chart. PPO is still in an uptrend, but uh, one thing I like to do is just draw trend lines under my momentum and just see if it's going to start breaking down here. I would say that's kind of a trend line I could draw, but it looks like there's a better fitting one here on this low, this low, and maybe pull it down a bit. So we're something like that. Anyway, I always want to make sure my momentum is in an uptrend, and if it's going to start to break, that I'm aware of that. Um, but price has been okay. I would just say it's been relatively choppy, right? This is $3 to $6, and then it comes back down. So uh, lots of wild swings here. Um, and as usually as you get towards the big wild swings, that's kind of towards an end of a rally, not usually in the middle. Let's jump in and view all. Uh, so we've already done rail car. Here's Wellbit. Stock was doing great. All of a sudden went from 14 to 20. That was a pretty strong week, a 30% week. Big volume showing up. And now the stock just consolidating those gains. Looking on Manitouac, I think these guys make big crane systems, if I'm not mistaken, for trucks. Um, big uptrend. Looking pretty good. Look at the scooter ranking. This is one of the best levels we've seen in two years. That's kind of, and I like it, we're only a month into it, two months into it. That's pretty good. And so that one that one would get on my name for something that could probably continue to run for a bit. And if it rolled over, well, so be it. But um, when I get stocks that are just starting to become outperformers and are continuing it, like this one's just starting to break out above prior highs, this looks pretty good to me. Um so that would be a name that I would like. And here's Bombardier. Stock's really migrating sideways for six weeks. Not as exciting. It's only trading in, in uh, under a dollar. So a little light spirit aero systems. This one looks to me like it's already rolling over. So it dipped below the 10 week. Now it's spent three weeks below the 10 week and the PPO is starting to turn over. I'm not as excited about that. The scooter ranking is still holding up okay. But again, the stock hasn't done anything since late February, so um, not that great. Veritif uh, ran up and then consolidated for two months, so not really seeing the uptrend I want. This is a little better. Agco, 
been running since last August and it continues to be one of the strongest performers out there. In August it was tracking in around $80, whoops, $80 or $70, high 70s and now a buck 60. So uh, a double, really nice. Embraer aircraft out of Brazil, ERJ. This is trending up, uh, just started to get into the um, high scooter rankings. I have to like that. That looks pretty good to me. I would say one thing, the volume's really starting to get a little bit light down here. So perhaps losing interest in the uptrend. Uh, Tata Motors made a nice rally off the low. Hasn't done anything since February 1st. A little bit underwater here. And you can see the full stochastic, which kind of measures where it is in the range for the last 14 weeks, is telling you it's at the bottom of the range, which typically isn't good. You kind of want it to be at the top of the range. Textron, this one's actually just starting to look almost like it's speeding up on its ramp up. That's pretty nice. Scooter ranking just starting to go above 75, so that's pretty strong, and that's in the large cap, so that's really good. Oshkosh Truck Company, um, nice uptrend here. PPOs or the scooter ranking just going above 75, and the PPO is making higher highs and higher lows. This all looks good. 10% is pretty heady, but um, that's kind of one of the highest levels this has gotten to. Typically for me, um, you know, if you've ever tried to short something with a really high PPO, it's not usually <laughs> easy to do. The stock has a lot of lovers at that point, and any pullbacks kind of get bought until they get worn out. So um, stock still looks great here. Relative strength outperformance compared to the S&P 500. Um, just starting to break above this 125 level, hovering up under here slightly at 127. So perhaps it can actually um, snap up and, and continue it up. Here's Crane breaking out to a new high uh, this week already. So that's nice to see. Again, decline in volume is starting to be a little bit worrisome. Astronics, um, again, we're seeing the decline in volume, and I mentioned that on the NASDAQ at the very beginning. Um, but this one, you know, scooter rankings just starting to take off. We want to see it do something a little bit more than gyrate sideways for seven or eight weeks. So even though the S&P S has been moving on to new highs, this hasn't really been able to do that. Energy recovery. This one's definitely working its way higher. Two weeks ago had a big surge from 17 to 21 and then kind of consolidating that gain right now. It's not a bad chart. Uh, always hard to buy after a big 20% move. Rev group. This one's consolidating. I'm going to use that word a lot today. Um, here's CAE and what they do is they have simulators for pilots and so with all the changes in the Boeing uh, planes uh, all of these py pilots need to go uh, back to the simulators and practice their flying learn about new features on the Boeing that they might have changed and then um, so if you're thinking a lot more pilots are going back to work they all have to go through the simulators um, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll sell more it all depends on their contractual arrangements does the airline own the simulator or does CAE own it, manage it, and and uh, offer a service offering with pilots going through? Anyway, it looks to me like it wants to start to take off to the upside. It's just barely above the prior highs, um, but the scooter ranking suggests it's moving pretty good. Um, want to see that kind of keep going. CNH Industrial, this one's rolling over. Not great. PPO is showing you that same thing. Uh, the uptrend in relative strength compared to the S&P 500 starting to weaken. I find this indicator weakens before the scooter ranking. Sometimes they'll weaken together. But normally once an uptrend on relative strength of something that was outperforming stops outperforming, for me that's a good place to at least take some money off the table. Bluebird, um, big uptrend here. I believe this is the bus company. It's trying to get through that $28, $29 level if it can push up. Go to PPO sell signal this week, so that's not perfect. Um, I would say the uptrend in relative strength is still there. But again, <laughs> starting to dip again below the 10-week the moving average with a sell signal. So a little bit um, uncomfortable. 
Erdo Group don't have a clue what they do. Uh, $26 for the last two months. So just kind of hanging in there. Terex, big construction equipment. This one's just starting to break out to the upside. That chart's beautiful. I like everything I see about it. Um, I don't mind the eight-week pullback. Now it's starting to break out the top side. That's just excellent. Um, applied industry, same thing. Eight-week consolidation breaking out to the upside. Uh, looks pretty good. <clears throat> Deer, what a beautiful uptrend this was from $100 up to $375. That's a big move. Now it's consolidating sideways. They have farm equipment, obviously, some commercial um digging equipment that kind of stuff farmers are doing great with corn wheat soy uh, soy prices heading higher um, so it's probably a good backdrop for deer long term here uh, but right now consolidating sideways for eight weeks after a big beautiful uptrend Lidol same thing consolidating for four or five months starting to make lower highs and lower lows here so that gets a little bit more questionable did have a nice push from 30 to 37 in the last two or three weeks so nice there triumph um hit a high at 1640 back in december and now basically traveling in that same area so not really making any headway five months later mrc global again flatlining so we're starting to see consolidation 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 a few like that terex chart breaking out to the upside here's one that was downtrending dxp and looks like it wants to start breaking out above the 10 week moving average um you know the the auto scaling on the chart squishes everything down pretty dramatically but this was 17 to 30 in a relatively short period of time so now that this downtrend's over perhaps the stock's ready to make its next leg higher john bean tech um grinding sideways again eight weeks sideways so not really seeing the pop on that name itt just a gentle climb higher nothing wrong with that chart still looks good scooter ranking is only hovering around 70 percent so that tells you that the speed of the move is a little less than some of the peers but this thing's still 97 dollars, sitting up around a 75 dollar to um, 40 week moving average which would be equal to like a 200 day. Um, so, you know, this is still well above its 40 week moving average, a nice strong uptrend, but moving at roughly uh, a little above average of its peers. So still, still behaving pretty well. Greenbrier, again, consolidating sideways. Rex Nord really needs to kind of break through this $49 level, just keeps hovering in and around here, touches it every week. If it finally breaks out, that's probably a nice place to get back on board. Looking in on H&E equipment, this one's nice uptrend. You can see the scooter ranking starting to lose momentum. Remember, we've sorted by that level. Once they start to get below 75, I, I get a little less um, impressed but i i want to i don't mind seeing the ones that were below and are starting to shoot above it's the ones that were above and are starting to fall below that's kind of an area that we want to be careful about here's raytheon i don't know why it says utx but it's raytheon anyway um breaking out to new highs here i covered the defense stocks off um two three weeks ago anyway um this one looks like it it got the memo starting to move higher AAR Corp Industrial Aerospace grinding sideways for six months. Really not making a move that we want to see. It probably has to start breaking the downtrend before we'd like to get interested. Site 1 just starting to break out through the upside. Uh, RBC bearings grinding sideways. Lots of that action. Need to start to see some of these pop and turn up. Clean Harbors Industrial Waste. I'm surprised that this one is so weak. When you compare it to like waste management and some of the other waste companies, they are absolutely rocking it out of the park. Anyway, this one's just kind of holding in there. Don't get me wrong, it's still up in the top right hand corner of the chart. But if you go look at waste management, I guess I could do that. Um, this chart has just been going crazy. So, um, anyway, that's the difference that I was speaking about. Uh, Sun Hydraulics. Uh, consolidating sideways after a really nice push uh, looks good any sort of breakout here would be nice to see 
Timken, another bearing company, uh, running sideways here. Can it get up into the, the $90 level and break through all of this resistance? Chart looks pretty good. Uh, Franklin Electric uh, just broke out here this week to above this $82 level from March. And even on the weakness on Tuesday, it still put in a nice big push. Toro, haven't we done without that long enough? Anyway, uh, here it is bull flagging up here after um, consolidating, running up, and now consolidating sideways for another couple of weeks. Albany International, uh, again, the scooter rankings are starting to get a little less powerful here. This is still climbing, nothing wrong with that. Um, again, what the scooter helps you see is which ones, well, the chart may be pointing up, the scale may be moving slow. This one's still doing just fine. I mean, it was a, a nice jump to $60 and it went up to 90, so a 50% run since November, consolidating sideways, nothing wrong with that. Heritage Crystal consolidating sideways for two months. Uh, Woodward Governor, big grind sideways since December. Nothing really to talk about there. Here's Caterpillar, and one that um, is doing really well. Finning International is is Caterpillar's dealership uh, network. Oh, uh, why I didn't put the dot to. Anyway, you can see this stock. Um, looking pretty strong nothing you know this is the kind of price action just grinding a little bit sideways here we'll have to see if it can make another move but i would expect if we get the infrastructure build um you know it's just going to keep pushing these big names around caterpillar testing the 10 week that's been a really good support level all the way through so wouldn't want to get too bearish on that name mueller industries same thing trying to break out to the upside um, so maybe I'll just leave it there. Um, the The big thing I'm focused on here is can they start to break out of these consolidation zones? And if so, that's a really bullish um, sign. Uh, again, some of the the defense stocks like Raytheon that and General Dynamics on the screen, uh, those types of names have have started to push lately, so they're looking pretty good. Also, want to lean towards. Um, some of the stuff around the steel business, um, trucking, uh, if you're building solar or wind or all that kind of stuff, uh, oil patch stuff, a lot of steel work in there. Um, so trucking into the far corners, the trucking area of the industrials is doing well. Railroads are doing well. Airlines are looking like they want to pause to me, but maybe I'm just too picky on that. Um, Anyway, I'd watch the uh, oil names closely. We had some API numbers out of uh, out on Tuesday that were very bullish. It was almost a 15 billion, 15 million uh, draw on crude in inventory on uh, gasoline and diesel all added up together. So when you see that sort of thing, all of a sudden inventory is dropping quickly, demand is improving refinery utilization is high so we could start to see a next leg higher in all those oil names um, some of them were moving in the after hours on on tuesday uh, so watch those for a nice move on wednesday we should get some numbers out of the energy administration uh, group telling us more about those inventories so um, keep that in mind the oil still look good I'm a little bit cautious on the industrial metals right now. Um, they just, copper's been going up, but they haven't followed. So usually that's not a positive sign. With that, thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. You can also see the recording on the Stock Charts TV YouTube page or on Stock Charts TV On Demand on the website. So uh, feel free to, to check that out. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Have a good week. Trade well. Bye-bye. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.